Hey guys, this episode I'm gonna show you how to add a command palette for power users of your Rails application. Now, a command palette looks like this. You hit some uh, shortcut like Command K on GitHub, and it will pull up a modal where you can type in commands and um, execute those. Typically, this is gonna be shortcuts to jump to a specific portion of your application. So for example, if I type PU, we're already in this repository, so it will pull up the pull requests for us. We hit enter and it'll jump us straight to that, which is super cool. So then if we hit command K, again, we can go to issues. We could go back to the homepage of the repository, or we could um, you know, search and say blurry, and we'll look in this repository for uh, the word blurry inside of our code, commits, issues, and so on. So you have basically um, a lot of options to uh, execute anything you want or what your power users would want using a command palette. So GitHub uses that for those cases, and we can use a library called Ninja Keys to actually implement this in our Rails app. So Ninja Keys is a JavaScript library that actually implements a custom element on the page for us. Um, so we can have it register the hotkeys for us. We hit Command K, it will pop up this modal. It will get, display all of our options and control the navigation around them. And then we implement what those options are and what they do with a little bit of JavaScript. So this is super easy. I made a PR to this, so it works with Hotwire and Turbo now. Um, so everything is good to go in your Rails app. So let's take a look. Uh, to install it, it's really simple. You say yarn add ninja keys that will add the package. Um, and if you're using import maps, you can import it that way as well. Uh, and then we'll want to go to our layout or something like our layout because this is going to be something you want on most every page. So if we say ninja keys, ninja keys, we can define that on the page and then have some way of our JavaScript actually um, registering this. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to use a stimulus controller. We're gonna say data controller equals command palette. And that's going to look for a stimulus controller, of course. Let's copy this hello controller and make a command palette controller.js. Inside here, we'll import the Ninja Keys JavaScript, which will make this element actually work. And then inside of our connect, we can actually define the options that we want to add to uh, Ninja Keys for the command palette. So it's nice to be able to have this JavaScript here uh, so that we don't have to add anything into the view directly. Stimulus can handle all the initialization and configuration of Ninja Keys for us. But this should be all we need to install to make it work. So if we reload our page and everything, we should now be able to hit Command K and type in a command. Um, nothing actually shows up because we didn't register any of those options just yet. So we can do that next. Um, and I will also show you how to set up attributes on the Ninja Keys. So Ninja Keys looks at the attributes, a certain uh, named attributes, and will have a little bit of configuration that you can do directly on the element itself. For example, if we say hide breadcrumbs and spell it correctly, what you'll notice is that that header at the top that said home has been removed. So there is no uh, header for breadcrumbs anymore just by adding that attribute. A more useful one is probably to add this uh, placeholder here. And if we put in a string here, we could use internationalization to say command palette, uh, placeholder, for example, and then we can go into en yaml and then add command palette placeholder um, placeholder dot dot dot. We need an L in there, holder, there we go. And we can refresh. Now we'll see it says placeholder dot 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 um, in place of the default placeholder. So that's a nice way to internationalize this, um, but Ninja Keys itself really needs uh, the data added to it. So what we can say is this.element.data equals an array. This is going to be our array of commands that we need to register um, to actually do some useful stuff. So maybe we'll just do some very simple things right now, um, but we will show how to pull that off. 
So in their examples, it shows you these objects you can pass into this array. Let's take one for example, this projects. And for projects, what we want, um, something useful for ours, maybe we'll say announcements, open announcements, and we'll have control A. Um, we can set whatever icon we want. By default, it will use the material icons from Google. Um, we can set a section on this if we would like. Um, so we could say announcements and maybe you end up having different sections for uh, things to like create an announcement or delete an announcement or whatever. Um, but what we wanna do is actually have this do turbo.visit slash announcements. And that is going to then send the user to the announcements page. So let's refresh our page. Let's type announcements. And one little thing we need to do is change command palette to a hyphen because that is the correct uh, syntax for registering the multi-word controllers. And if we refresh our page here, we'll see that we get open announcements. We can type in announcements. It's got a little section of announcements uh, as well because we had that option there. But you can type that. You can hit enter. It will execute that little handler function which made our turbo visit to the announcements page. And it would be great for us to have an additional one of these. So let's go and set this up so that we have like a home and uh, a home. We don't need a section for it maybe control H and we'll visit the root route um, and we'll set up our icons as well. So the icons, um, you can see down here that they come from uh, Google fonts. So you can use any of the icons from the um, material icons there and you would just drop that into your head tag as well. Now to use those material icons, you won't use the icon, you will just say MD icon instead and you would use whatever name. So notifications and then maybe for this icon, we would say MD icon uh, home. And then uh, this will actually use the material design icon instead. If you use icon, you can specify an SVG tag inside of here. So if you wanna use heroicons or whatever else, that is a great option as well. Um, but once those are set up, you can look through all these notification icons and whatnot, pick what your favorite is. We can refresh our page, hit Command K, and now you see we have pretty icons over on the left. So here we can say home, hit enter, announcements, home, jump back be between those really, really quickly, and you can register um, as many other commands as you would like. Now there's a bunch of CSS options that you can use. Um, they use CSS variables for actually styling this because it is a custom element. There are actually things inside of the ninja keys element that get rendered in the shadow DOM, um, but you don't actually see in your HTML. So if we were to hit command K and inspect this, what you'll see in your, um, in your elements here, you'll see the ninja keys element and then your shadow root, which has all of this HTML that your code in your Rails app will never know about. The JavaScript generates all of that, but you can style every one of these pieces as needed. Um, they have all of these CSS variables. For that, you can also look at these um, parts, like the action list or the ninja action or whatever, and change how those look as well. You also have the ability to use slots, so if you wanna add a custom footer, you can drop that inside of Ninja Keys as well. So let's do that and take a look. If we just paste that in, the slot footer is going to um, get set up automatically so that when we refresh, now we have this custom footer at the bottom. So that is awesome. Um, but in general, I'm probably just gonna use the default one with these helper examples um, and controls listed out below. But that's really it. You have complete customization here of you know, the handlers, so you can do whatever you want inside of them. You register the commands. You could make this pull from the server side if you wanted this to be dynamic, kind of like get what GitHub does where they know that you're in a repository, so they give you those actions. But if you're on you know, an organization or a user profile, there are other actions available in those. So you can make this dynamic depending on the page and set it up however you would like. 
So that is it for this episode. Ninja Keys is a custom element, so it will automatically unregister whenever you navigate to a different page if Ninja Keys is removed from the page. And same thing applies with your stimulus controller, so everything will work really smoothly out of the box um, with Ninja Keys and stimulus connecting all of this up for your application. So that's it for this episode. If you wanna see more like this, let us know in the comments below. Until then, I will talk to you in the next one. Peace.